Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Um, today what we're going to be talking about is we're going to go over uh, graphing derivatives. So if you can see on your iPad screen here. Um, graphing functions, their first derivatives, second derivatives, we'll look at that. That'll be our last problem. We're going to do four questions today. And then a uh, reminder, there's homework due tomorrow. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, homework is due tomorrow by 11.59 p.m. Um, yeah, um, homework is based on uh, chain rule. So make sure that you're going through all those special cases that you, you know, check back to the video we did Thursday and Friday to make sure of it. But it's due tomorrow. Uh, that'll be the last time on the quarter, so keep that in mind. So quarter, or not quarter, uh, midterm ends this Friday, so keep that in mind. We have a test on Friday. We'll re start reviewing on Wednesday and, and Thursday in here. But yeah, let's uh, jump right in here. As you guys can tell, a picture from my son's breakfast. He was proud of that. He had to take a picture of it. All right, uh, but let's jump right in here. So um, first problem that we need to, that we need to discuss here. Um, we're going to be talking about if I were to give you a function. So let me uh, let me give you a graph here. Okay. So let's say my function is something like this. Okay. Let's say that that's my function. Well, here's the idea. Um, it has a change of slope, right? There's slope that's positive. There's some slope that's negative. Um, let me make this a little more exaggerated so we can really cover that. All right. So let's say that's my slope. It's, it's, this is my original function. Okay? And we're going to look at the slope at every moment on this graph. So on this left side here, this left side, as I go from left to right, so keep that in mind, that's why I'm saying left side, left to right side, um, as you can see here, the slope over here is positive, positive numbers on the slope. Okay? Then we'll eventually hit zero slope. So this is a zero slope, and that's about eh, one and a half, two-ish. So let's say it's one and a half, negative one and a half. And then eventually slope turns out to be negative. So slope turns out to be negative until about, uh, let's see, what is, what is that? About, about two and a half, let's say two. Slope is zero again, so let's say that's about two. And then slope goes back to positive. Slope goes back to positive. So how do we graph that? So the idea is that, on the left side over here, so now we're going to graph this first derivative graph. So this is the first derivative function. So what you do is you, on the y-axis you plot the slope. So if we have positive numbers, you're on the y-axis above zero. If you hit zero, you're right on the x-axis. And if you're at negative slope, you're at below the x-axis. You're in negative y territory. So on the right, or on the, sorry, the far left side, up to negative 1.5, negative 1.5, the slope turned out to be zero. But on the left side of that, slope was all positive, and it gradually turned into zero, as you can see here. It gradually flow into zero, um, and that's what you're seeing there. Then after 1.5, negative 1.5, the, the slope turned negative, up until about two. So up till about two, slope turned out to be negative, and it was very gradual, and it came back to zero. And then eventually, the slope turns positive, and it kind of goes up forever slope turned positive after 2. So what you're looking at here, this is a gr this is a graph of the first derivative of the original function. Now what most people always get stuck on is, okay, why are you above the y-axis? Because I'm looking at that and, you know, you're in the negative territory over here. No, no, no. I'm looking at y numbers. The y's are going up. Those are positive y numbers, and that represents my slope, the exact slope at that moment. You know, maybe slope is 2, maybe it's 17, and that would be above the, the x-axis, 17. And then as I get closer to zero, it goes, it's actually supposed to be more flowing. So it's actually probably supposed to look like a parabola. So um, let's move on to the next one. Let's, let's, take a, let's take a look at another one. Maybe just seeing another example will, will help us out. All right, so uh, let's say my function is, um, let's, say, let's say it's it's horizontal up to here. Then we're gonna go and we're gonna go down to so you're going to go down to 5 here, just like that. And then it's going to go back up at kind of a rate. And notice that they're very jagged lines. Not smooth and flowing. It's very very staccato, just very just rigid. And so what we're looking at here is the slope at any given moment. So um, as we do this, so slope is 0 here from the left side to the right. So this is a slope of 0 as we go from up to here. And then as we go this direction, this is negative slope, and it was constant. It's not changing, it's not flowing. It's just very, it's a very linear function. So slope looks like it's dropping to running to, okay? 
and then um, and that's what it looks like it's going it's dropping to running to and then eventually hits you know this this point down here and then eventually just turns possible all of a sudden there wasn't like a flow into it it just rigidly changed to a slope of uh, looks like it's going up three over two uh, positive three over two so so drawing this out drawing this first derivative of this function uh, we have a zero slope up to this point so slope is zero up until this moment then slope turns out to be negative two um, so it turns out to be actually negative one negative two over two is is negative one over one so it, it goes you know down um, to negative one and across negative two divided by two is negative one so it holds that slope up until about five it holds this slope and then eventually it just rigidly changed to three over two which is about one and a half and it held that slope the rest of the time because again my graph here is representing what slope is doing at any moment it's staying constant at certain moments it's not flowing and changing over the life of the function it's staying rigid and so the slope is staying constant. That's why you're seeing these horizontal lines representing my slope at any given moment. Very different than the last one. If you look at the back of that last graph, the slope changed smoothly. You know, it was positive, but it eventually smoothed out to zero, and then it smoothed out to negative and smoothed out to zero again, as you can see from my graph. So very, very different style pictures. Um, let's go through another one. So I only got um, two slides here. So let's let's start with an original function. So uh, let's say my function here. So this is me, my f of x. We're going to find two derivative graphs of this one. So we're going to do the first derivative, and then once we find that, then we'll go and we'll do a second derivative of it. Uh, so let's say uh, let's say my graph turns out to be something like this, and then it comes down and comes to this, and then it goes back up. So let's say this is my graph. So. So up until about, was this, negative 4, slope was positive. And then at negative 4, the slope turned out to be 0. So this was, this was a 0 slope. Then it ended up being negative for a while, very, very gradually changing to negative, and then eventually hit 0 again. Hit 0 right here about, oh, what is that, 2.5, 2.5, hit 0 slope. Then after that, it, it gradually changed back to positive again, very gradual. So let's, let's draw this out. So slope was positive up to about negative 4. Okay, so slope was up to negative 4, um, and that's when, it, that's when it hit 0. So up to negative 4, it hit 0 slope. And it was, it was positive up to that point, and it eventually gradually turned into 0. Then it turned negative for a while up until about 2.5. Up till about 2.5, it turned back to zero, and then it turned positive. And I'm above the y, the y, the x-axis, so those y numbers are positive. And again, it's supposed to be very smooth, so it's almost supposed to look like a parabola. So that's the first derivative graph as I plot it. And again, very smooth because this is a continuous function; it's not rigid and jagged. All right. So now. We jump right in, and now we do this last last example here. Okay, so last example, um, we're going to go off of that last one. So I'm going to draw that same exact graph, and I'll try to do it a little bit better here. There we go. Much more smooth. So this was that first derivative that we just came up with. Now we're going to do the second derivative of this thing. So the second derivative was the second derivative graph. This is negative slope up until the point where it hit zero and it looks like it's hitting zero about right here about negative one and then it turned positive slope so let's draw this out so this is going to be that uh, let's go this is going to be the second derivative graph so it was po it was negative slope up until about one or negative one so at negative one it was at negative slope and it was gradually turning into zero and then eventually, uh, eventually after negative one, it, it turned out to be positive slope very gradually. So like we were saying in class, it looks like a tangent graph or it looks like a cubic graph when we get done. Um, very interesting, very uh, kind of flowing numbers. But again, if you notice, I'm plotting the slope like it was coordinates on this new graph. So you find the slope, plot the dot, find the slope, plot the dot. Find slope, plot the dot, and when it hits zeros, that's what I really mark. So your Google question of the day asks for how would you describe how to draw these? 
Well, I find where zero slopes are. As you can tell, I figured out where my zeros were, and I very, very pointedly put zero, you know, right on the x-axis, right where it hit zero slope. And then, you know, for negative slope and positive slope, I either go above the x-axis or below the x-axis, and I just kind of draw them so that they're flowing. That's the idea. Now, how you explain that into words on Google Classroom, I have no idea. So, uh, but there you go. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, uh, remember, you have homework due tomorrow, and I hope to see you guys real soon. Bye.